Okay guys, so here we are. The finishing position will always be that arm bar that we looked at from day one when we get on top, or we're gonna show a very quick uh, how to take the person's back in a second, right? Like if you can. So uh, no, not, understand that the number one thing is that when you are in a headlock and almost like every other escaping position when you're down, you don't want to be flat on your back. Okay, so what I'm saying here is if professor comes in and I'm laying flat on my back with my arms out like this, come on, like I'm like chilling on a beach, he comes, he grabs my arm, he grabs everything, he's been to me all of his weight, can get on me, oh, it's terrible. Oh. Okay, this position is technically called a scarf hold, okay, because he has my head and my arm, he's holding it. This is a scarf hold position. It's a very good pinning position. You'll see this in wrestling a lot, in judo a lot, because in those sports, a pin is for the win, okay, where we are not as concerned. I don't ever want to be in this position, but it, uh, we'll get into the, this position more in the intermediate curriculum. So what am I saying about being on my side? Here, look, arms wide, flat on my back. The first thing I want to address is this arm. I want to tuck this arm in. The only way that I can tuck this arm in from here is to turn onto that shoulder and pull the elbow in as tight as I can and cup his hip right here, okay? The second thing we want to be addressing is this second hand. I want it framing on the face. So almost as if we were in side control and we had that frame position. It's the exact same thing, except I'm turned on my side now. Now from here, a lot of times what we're saying with the back is people can squeeze very hard, okay? And they can lean forward, but your head can just slip right out sometimes. And here I am with an exposed back. Okay, so this is, what I'm, this is what Professor and I were both talking about, right? When somebody headlocks you, uh, when you're more ready for it, right. you can like be like, oh, this person's gonna headlock me. Oh yes, thank you. And you can like squeeze your head tight and boom, just slip right out to their back. We're not gonna look at that anymore today because we're gonna look at getting to that top position from the headlock. But just realize the number one escape is that, what I just showed, just boop, pop right out to the back. So here I am, I'm on my side, okay? And Professor is holding me in this headlock position. Now look, this first escape, we call it the pendulum, it only works with children, okay? Because they don't understand their base that much, but it sets up all the rest. So you have to try this one first. And what this one is, is look, right now my legs are very close to Professor's legs. I'm going to take them and I'm going to move away and open up the space. He is not going to react to them. Notice when I moved away, I did not fall to my back. I did not do this. I stayed on my side, kicked my legs up in the air a little bit. As I put them down, set him down. And here we are in this headlock thing, top position. What did we do? Block, move, step, slide, slide the knee, frame, Open, lean, step, sit, and here's my arm. Without Professor with the pendulum for a second. Too often, uh, the mistake that I see the most is people trying to swing their legs up in the air as high as they can. And when you do that, it puts you on your back, which is where you, never where you want to be. So what am I saying? People move, and sometimes when they move, they get on their back. No good. Okay? Or as you like to say, not as skillful as could be. Not gonna okay, help. not gonna help. Two, one, I move, but then they stay on their side through this, but then they're like, oh, I need a lot of momentum, and they do this, and then, ugh, and they're stuck right here. You don't need a lot of momentum. You just need to get, get it going, okay? So when I'm here, look, move, kick, up, okay? Move, kick, and up I am. Okay, one more time with him. Here we go. Move, kick, up, and now we would perform the arm bar, but not without basing out first. One, two, three.
So here we are guys. We are going to look at another option of what can happen from the headlock position. Like, like uh, I hope you got my joke when you go to 7-Eleven and 11 out of seven times. I hope, I hope that caught on. Um, they are not only gonna headlock you, but they're probably gonna punch you too. So how do we deal with the punching, okay? I'm in the headlock, okay? I'm hugging the leg tight, and look, I feel the headlock let go. He's only letting that headlock go to do one thing, and that's to punch me in the face. What I don't wanna do is try to catch the arm, because he can move the punch I can, and miss it, and boom, it can go so many different directions. I want my head tucked, I want my shoulder to come up to my face, and I want my hand to go out straight, so that when he throws that punch, it gets stuck inside. Collapse it to the body, hold the wrist. Once I have the wrist, I pass it back, and I go a two-on-one grip on that hand. From the two-on-one grip, I release to the one, on, one hand on each grip, and I'm gonna stand up very tall. Extra getting my head up high, putting a lot of pressure on the shoulder. Uh, spin to our right, Professor. From this position, I'm gonna duck under the arm and chicken wing the arm up the back. Um, look, I'm being nice to Professor because it's a very uncomfortable position, but you want this hand to go up as high on the back as you can. From here, I grab the shirt, kick out the knee, set him down. Okay, I'd still be holding the hand, but again, this can be very uncomfortable. Lay him down to his side and control the knee on the belly. One more time. In the headlock, I'm defending like I should. That arm comes back to punch. Out straight, catch the arm. Grab two on one. Wrist up tall, so we're standing right next to each other. Duck, grab, kick, step, set him down. Move them down. Here we go. One, two, three. 